Welcome to the sixth annual National Caregivers Convening. I am Paula Cobb with Phillips Healthcare, and we are so thrilled to be a part of this another year. And what a year it has been. With COVID and all the challenges that we have overcome, we have been able to collaborate together with the VA, the Dole Foundation, of course, many other partners like Cerner, Wounded Warriors, and Phillips, making sure that we bring the greatest experience that we can, helping, our, helping each other solve the problems that you face each and every day. As I've had the opportunity to meet with so many of you this year, long conversations, I know that it is so hard every day just to get up and face the challenges that you face. I'm with you, we are all with you, and we are so excited that through our successful partnerships that we've been able to deliver value and change the way we actually communicate and work together. Just this year, we were able to host special web conferences to give you more information, and thousands and thousands of you, as a matter of fact, 26,000 of you were able to participate in these sessions. How exciting is it that we can do these types of activities that helps us stay connected, gives us the support that we need, and also helps us identify the future problems that we must address. We at Phillips are so proud to partner with all of you. We understand that this is a daily challenge and we are in it each and every day with you. We know that together, anything is possible and that together we can change the way healthcare is delivered, bring the right tools that you need and make your life easier. As we look forward to next year and continuing to work together, we of course will be embracing and looking and deep diving into new topics and especially the children that you all are concerned about the impacts in the future as well as really looking at the mental health issues that are facing and challenging our families and each other. At Phillips, we're with you, we're with the Dole Foundation, and we are so excited to kick off this year and to really have an exciting virtual conference and gear up and get ready for next year when we actually get to get back together face to face. So with that, let me celebrate and introduce to you our Military Kids Got Talent winter, Kayla Makabata with the National Anthem. Hello everyone, my name is Kayla Francesca. I'm from Hampton, Virginia, and I'm seven years old. Thank you, Kayla, for that wonderful performance. And welcome, everyone, to the sixth annual National Convening for Veteran Caregivers, co-hosted by the Elizabeth Dole Foundation and the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. I'm Steve Schwab, CEO of the Dole Foundation, and I'm thrilled to be here with my very good friend and longtime military caregiver champion, the VA's Senior Advisor for Families, Caregivers, and Survivors, Meg Cabot. I want to give a heartfelt thanks to Paula Cobb for opening our event and to the entire Phillips team for returning as our presenting sponsor. 
Phillips has helped make every one of our national convenings possible, all six, and we couldn't be more grateful. This year's convening is focused on the theme, driving impact and making a difference. Throughout the event, we will be discussing and updating you on the most forward-leaning and innovative work being done in the caregiver space for you. We'll also announce an exciting new initiative with our friends at Wounded Warrior Project that will change the experience of caregivers all across America. You'll want to stick around for that. And later today, we're very excited to host our first ever Careers for Caregivers Jobs Fair, presented by Booz Allen Hamilton. All the participating employers have caregiver-friendly jobs ready to be filled with qualified hidden heroes. Of course, we're also looking forward to kicking off this morning with remarks from our visionary founder, Senator Elizabeth Dole, as well as our Secretary of Department of Veterans Affairs, an incredibly dynamic leader who's already demonstrated his steadfast support of caregivers and families, Secretary Dennis McDonough. On behalf of everyone at the Department of Veterans Affairs, let me say how grateful we are to join the Elizabeth Dole Foundation in putting caregivers front and center at this event every year. Steve, you and your team have continued to do tremendous work anticipating and responding to the challenges of caregivers, and your response to the COVID pandemic has been second to none. We at VA have been proud to join the Elizabeth Dole Foundation in producing programs like the Caregiver Community Connection Series with the help of Wounded Warrior Project to offer caregivers digital workshops on self-care and mindfulness, resume building, professional networking, and accessing mental health resources, just to name a few. We're also grateful to be teaming with the foundation to offer free respite relief to caregivers in need. We are going to get an update on that program later today, and I know the impact has been tremendous. And over the last year, the VA has continued expansion of the Campaign for Inclusive Care, our joint initiative with the Elizabeth Dole Foundation, creating a system-wide approach to care that embraces, engages, and empowers caregivers from day one of the care journey. I'm proud of VA's commitment to this effort, and I'm excited that today the Foundation will be presenting the Campaign for Inclusive Care Champion Award to those VA professionals who have gone above and beyond to include caregivers as part of their veterans' health care teams. As you'll hear from Secretary McDonough in a few minutes, our partnership in these initiatives is part of VA's work to support caregivers, because we know that caregivers are essential to improving veterans' access to care and improving outcomes for veterans, and equally as important, that caregivers themselves have earned our nation's gratitude and support. Since all of you are tuning in and are in front of your computers or smart devices, please join the conversation about the convening on social media. On Twitter, tag the handles at Dole Foundation and DEPT Vet Affairs. Don't forget Phillips, at Phillips NA. And to connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn, find us at at Elizabeth Dole Foundation, at Veterans Affairs, and at Phillips. And please use the hashtag EDFVAConvening 2021. Tell us what you think, ask questions and share what you learn. We want to hear from you today. I now have the pleasure and the honor of introducing our first speaker of the day, Senator Elizabeth Dole. Senator Dole has led a distinguished career in public service and is the truest example of a servant leader. For six years, she was a member of the Federal Trade Commission, followed by two years as assistant to President Reagan for public liaison. She was the first woman to be appointed U.S. Secretary of Transportation and later returned to the Presidential Cabinet as the U.S. Secretary of Labor. She was the first woman to lead the American Red Cross since its founder and the first woman to represent the state of North Carolina in the United States Senate. Ten years ago, in the halls of Walter Reed, she witnessed the devotion of caregivers up close, and she pledged to herself that she would ensure these hidden heroes would no longer go without the support they needed and deserved. At the same time, I was witnessing the same thing in the halls of what was then National Naval Medical Center. I am so honored that our work crossed paths soon after. She is why we are here today. She has been an incredible champion of mine and has supported me during the ups and downs of our shared mission. I am proud to call her my mentor and my friend. Please welcome Senator Elizabeth Dole. 
Oh my, Meg, thank you so much. Meg and Steve, thank you. You've both done remarkable work leading the military caregiver community, particularly throughout the challenges of the last year. Meg, as you know, we've long advocated for a major position in the Secretary's office dedicated to military families, caregivers, and survivors. And I'm so grateful for your strong leadership in this new role over the last 10 months. My friends, I'm particularly delighted to be addressing you today as this week marks the beginning of our Foundation's 10th anniversary. We're going to spend the next year reflecting on the progress we've made over the last decade and laying out the focus of our mission going forward. But as I think about where this foundation started, as an idea inspired by the devotion I saw in caregivers at Walter Reed, and to see how it has grown, I feel extremely blessed and grateful. Of course, so many of our accomplishments were made possible with the help of incredible partners, like our friends at the VA. Our foundation is enormously proud to be co-hosting this event once again with the department and Secretary Dennis McDonough. From his first days in charge, the secretary has pledged to keep caregivers among the VA's highest priorities. And he and his team have certainly made good on that promise. Secretary McDonough has wholeheartedly supported the VA Veterans Family, Caregiver, and Survivor Advisory Committee, which I'm pleased to chair. We recently sent seven important recommendations to him, and we look forward to his response following their review. The Secretary and his team also took life-saving action this year, carrying out the Saves Lives Act. Our foundation called for this legislation to enable the VA to expand its COVID-19 vaccine distribution to those who provide critical care to our veterans each and every day. Leaders on both sides of the aisle responded. The policy was a historic recognition of the nation's responsibility to caregivers, our hidden heroes. Since passage of the Saves Lives Act, the VA has vaccinated more than 85,000 caregivers and veteran spouses. I'm also extremely grateful today to our friends at Phillips, particularly Paula Cobb and Vitor Rocha for returning as our convenings presenting sponsor this year. And to be sure their support does not end with today, Phillips demonstrates a year round commitment to improving the lives of caregivers. With the generosity and expertise of the Phillips team, our foundation has been working on a mental health journey map to better understand the emotional experience and challenges of caregivers. You'll recall that Phillips first helped us design the caregiver journey map as a digital visualization of caregiver life. This original map is regarded as one of our most instructive resources and has become a transformative tool for the VA. I know the mental health version will be just as well received. The foundation has also worked with Phillips to keep our caregiver community empowered and informed during these very difficult times. The ongoing pandemic has continued to load additional weight on our caregivers. And I'd like to recognize Steve Schwab and my incredible foundation team for the work they've done with our partners to respond to this ongoing struggle. Together with the VA, the foundation has continued to grow our respite relief program to provide free professional respite services to caregivers in stress. Thanks to the generosity of our partners at CareLinks and Wounded Warrior Project, I'm pleased to announce here today that over the last 14 months together, we have provided more than $500,000 worth of professional care services to caregivers at no cost. Testimonials have poured in from caregivers nationwide who were grateful to finally have just a little bit of time to address those things that have been sitting on the back burner. They describe these professionals as pure angels, a godsend and a wonderful gift and we still have free respite hours available. If you, a caregiver, could use help around the house, especially with the busy holiday season coming up, please apply today. Visit hiddenheroes.org slash respite to get started. Generating insights into the caregiver journey has been so valuable for our programs, particularly our Campaign for Inclusive Care, which trains medical professionals to include caregivers and healthcare teams from day one. 
The campaign was developed in partnership with the VA and with the tremendous support, tremendous support of USAA. It began as a pilot program and has now been expanded to include the entire VA system nationwide, a testament to its tremendous value. Of course, VA facilities are not the only places where we want caregivers to feel welcomed. Our foundation envisions in America where hidden heroes feel recognized and supported locally in their communities where they live. That's why we continue to grow our hidden hero cities with the help of Comcast NBC Universal. The list of committed communities now stands at 173 and growing. The foundation is also fully invested in our new Hidden Helpers initiative, making sure that the challenges and hardships of caregiver kids are not overlooked. Three years ago at our national convening, I shared the story of caregiver fellow Nikki Stevens who cares for her husband, John. I spoke about one of her hardest days as a caregiver when she heard a crash in the room above her and flew upstairs to find her husband on the ground suffering a grand mal seizure. But Nikki was not the only one who rushed into the room that morning. A sweet young boy named Noah, their son, also ran in. While he was helpless and traumatized that day, Noah grew up fast and quickly learned what he should do when his dad has a seizure, which has happened too many times to count. He also learned to read his mom's mood and know when to step in to help with his younger siblings or just to offer her a hug. The Elizabeth Dole Foundation is working with the coalition specifically to support these hidden helpers, military kids, to study their journeys, offer them help, and ensure that the negative outcomes of caregiving do not reach another generation. Perhaps most remarkable about today's military community is that they are so committed to standing by those who serve they are so resolute in leaving no person behind that when our nation began withdrawing from Afghanistan, our service members, veterans, and their families were the first to raise their hands and say, wait, wait, we're leaving some Americans and some of our allies behind. In addition to the extraordinary airlift carried out by our military, we saw veterans and caregivers, including some of our own Dole Caregiver Fellows, working together to evacuate those still in Afghanistan. My husband Bob once said that amid the tragedy of war, we see a summoning of the greatest qualities of which human beings are capable. Courage beyond measure, loyalty beyond words, sacrifice and ingenuity and endurance beyond imagining. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great privilege and honor to work with so many committed individuals who exemplify those very qualities. And now it gives me great pleasure to introduce the 11th Secretary of Veterans Affairs, the Honorable Dennis McDonough. Previously, Secretary McDonough served our nation as the 26th White House Chief of Staff under President Obama, where he managed the White House staff worked across the cabinet to carry out the president's priorities and strengthen the operations of the federal government. Prior to that role, he served as Deputy National Security Advisor for Strategic Communications and chaired the National Security Council's Deputies Committee. Throughout his service in the White House, Dennis McDonough helped lead the administration's work on behalf of military families and veterans. Ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome my friend and my partner in raising up caregivers all across this great country, Secretary Dennis McDonough. Good morning, everyone. Senator Dole, thanks so much for that overly kind introduction and for your steadfast leadership of this amazing foundation and for your decades of public service and service to the country. I said it earlier this year, and I'll say it again now. Our nation is a better, more caring place because of you and your leadership, and the leadership of Senator Bob as well. We're all in your debt. Thanks as well to Steve Schwab and Meg Cabot, our excellent hosts and two of the very best advocates for caregivers in this country. And of course, 
Thanks to all of you who have joined us today for the annual convening of the Elizabeth Dole Foundation. I want to just mention that you'll have a great opportunity to see during the day some amazing VA professionals, including Colleen Richardson and Ben Kligler, two great leaders and advocates for our caregivers. And I have to say, holy moly, Kayla Francesca, what a rendition of the national anthem. Uh, and I know you're only eight, but when it comes time for you to get a job, uh, boy, uh, what a leader already. So, you know, wherever I, whenever I think of the work that you all do, I, I remember a story I heard from a veteran whose wife is his primary caregiver. This veteran is a quadruple amputee, and he needs his wife's help for most everything, from brushing his teeth, to shaving, to getting dressed, to putting on his prosthetics in the morning. And when he tells his story, he notes that people come up to him all the time and say, thank you for your service. And he appreciates that, he really does. But he also says that nobody ever comes up to his wife and thanks her for the service that she's given to this country by taking care of him. That's wrong. And it gets to the very heart of what Senator Dole said earlier, which is that caregivers should not be left to struggle alone. They should not be left behind. I know that at times throughout VA's history, caregivers have been overlooked or not included or not appreciated for the backbreaking work that you do and the incredible service that you provide. But I'm here today to say to any caregiver watching, those days are over. Let me repeat, those days are over. At VA and in this administration, we see you. We hear you. We will do everything in our power to support you. And we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for all that you do for the country and the veterans you love. Our job at VA and at EDF is to help those caregivers, to find ways to make their lives easier, both because that's the right thing to do and because supporting caregivers improves outcomes for veterans. We know that many caregivers have to balance managing a household, childcare, legal and financial challenges, and complex medical conditions all at once. And now, on top of everything, they're dealing with the tragedies and dangers of this pandemic. This is the type of stress that leads caregivers to suffer from anxiety, depression, and health issues more often than most Americans. And it means that our shared mission to care for those caregivers has never been more important than it is right now. During the pandemic, I know that EDF has risen to that challenge partnering with VA to provide more than $500,000 worth of free professional respite services to caregivers who needed it. And you just heard Senator Dole say there's still funding available. And our great VA employees have done the same. By vaccinating more than 85,000 caregivers and veteran spouses through the Saves Lives Act, as Senator Dole mentioned earlier, by giving protective equipment to caregivers at the height of the pandemic, by delivering more care and more benefits to more veterans than ever before, thus ensuring that caregivers didn't have to shoulder this burden alone. And by adapting to telehealth and doubling the size of the program of comprehensive assistance, thus providing more direct support to caregivers than ever before. In short, during this time when caregivers and veterans have needed us most, we've been there for you. And we've done this together, but we can't stop here. Instead, with EDF's help, we need to continue to do better for veterans and caregivers. We need to continue to be better for veterans and caregivers. And we're going to do that by driving forward the four fundamental principles that shape VA's vision for the future. Advocacy, access, outcomes, excellence. First on advocacy, we're making sure that VA is the nation's premier advocate for veterans and caregivers. Not premier excuse maker, but premier advocate. 
And when it comes to advocacy, it starts at the top. Our shared mission could not be a higher priority for this administration, nor could it be closer to President Biden and First Lady's heart. You can see evidence of that in the dedication of joining forces, the First Lady's initiative, which just this month published a report that will help VA create a new program for veteran families. You can see evidence of that dedication in our close collaboration with the Veterans Family, Caregiver, Survivor, and Advisory Committee, which you just heard is chaired by Senator Dole herself. And here's the deal. You don't cross her as chair. And you can see evidence of that dedication in the very existence of Meg Cabot's position, speaking of somebody you don't cross, as the first ever senior advisor for caregivers. But as we all know, advocacy at the leadership level doesn't mean anything if caregivers don't use the benefits they deserve, which is where you come in. For many caregivers, you are their connection to VA. In many cases, you're the ones who help them realize they are caregivers in the first place. All of which is to say EDF is one of VA's most important partners. And I'm committed to working with you every day to improve access for caregivers we serve. Second, access. We'll move heaven and earth to get caregivers timely access to their VA re resources. For care caregivers who help veterans with assisted daily living, that's access to the program of comprehensive assistance, which we're soon expanding to cover all generations of caregivers. For other caregivers, that's access to the program of general caregiver support services, for which we have dedicated staff at every VA medical center ready to meet with caregivers, help identify their veterans' needs, and come up with a plan to address them. But access for caregivers doesn't only mean access to programs. It also means access to their health care, the veterans, their veterans receive, and the, to the great VA clinicians who provide it. Because caregivers are our partners, and they need to be in the room and in the know to help their veterans achieve the best possible results. Next, outcomes. Because, as you know, the health and happiness of caregivers is inextricably tied to the health and happiness of the veterans they serve and to the strength of this country. This is perhaps best exemplified by the story of Kathy Thomas, a full-time caregiver to her husband, Army vet who served in Afghanistan. She's, part, she's a part of VA's peer support program for caregivers. Before that program, she said that she was completely alone. She had nobody to talk to, and it was wearing on her. But now, thanks to the program, she has a tight-knit group of caregivers to rely on. And that support system has had potentially life-saving results. Let me explain. A while ago, her, her husband, who suffers from post-traumatic stress and diabetes, seemed very depressed. Kathy was worried that he might be suicidal. But she was reluctant to discuss it with him. Then she spoke with her peer support group. And that conversation gave her the courage and comfort she needed to talk to her husband. And now he's doing better. They both are. The point is that better outcomes for caregivers like Kathy lead directly to better outcomes for the veterans they love that's borne out by stories like Kathy's and by recent VA research which tell us that veterans are better able to deal with chronic illnesses like diabetes if they have a caregiver looking out for them. In other words, by improving caregiver outcomes, we improve veteran outcomes and we at VA are going to stop at nothing to do both. One more thing on outcomes. We know that a lot of older vets and non-vets, especially those with mental health and cognitive challenges, are struggling right now to find home and community-based services that meet their needs. This is because of pandemic-related staffing issues, bed shortages at hospitals, and a lack of home-based services. It's a reminder that you and caregivers nationwide are so often the pillars in veterans' lives that keep them from falling through the cracks. You're the ones managing vets' medications, making sure their regimens are followed. You're the ones helping them to and from countless appointments. You're the ones who are in the middle of the night responding to everything from emergencies to nightmares. 
And in doing so, whether you know it or not, you are the ones preventing bad outcomes like homelessness and suicide. So we're laser focused on finding innovative home and community-based services that work for you and the veteran you loved, you love. And all of you will be critical partners in that effort. Finally, excellence. We're seeking excellence in all we do for veterans and caregivers by leveraging the strength and diversity that defines the veteran population, the caregiving population, and this country. Every person entering a VA facility must feel safe, free of harassment and discrimination. And we will welcome all veterans and caregivers. Now, there's so much more I could say here, but it all boils down to this. For too long, too many veterans have fought to protect our rights, my rights, my freedoms, and then had to come home to fight brutal battles here for their own rights and freedoms. Tragically, some of those fights continue, but not at VA. No caregiver, no veteran is going to have to fight to get the quality care, benefits, and services they've earned. Nobody. So that's where VA is headed. Providing more support to caregivers than ever before with advocacy, access, outcomes, and excellence as our guiding principles. But make no mistake, we can't do it without you. Just, get, just ask Aliha Gianson. A caregiver who says that EDF played a big part in connecting me with the resources that helped me care for my father. Or Jen Ostan, a caregiver who says that EDF helps her deal with the emotional burden of this work. Or Georgette Winton, Winton, a caregiver who says that EDF has helped her realize that she is not alone in this journey. Those veteran caregivers, those hidden heroes, and the 5.5 million, million of them across this country are, as you so rightly call them, hidden heroes. You know, President Biden often says that our nation's most sacred obligation is to prepare and equip troops we send into harm's way. And then, to care for them when they return home. Well, nobody keeps that promise quite like our nation's caregivers. And nobody helps our caregivers quite like EDF. You make us at VA better. And in so doing, you serve the caregivers who serve our nation's veterans. Our caregivers are happier. Our veterans are healthier. Our country is stronger as a result. So thank you for your magnificent work, for your partnership, for putting up with me, and for all the work we will do together. God bless you. God bless you, our nation's veterans and the caregivers who serve them so well. And may we always give them, may we always give you our very best. Thank you all very much.
Dominique, the Chief of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion and Corporate Responsibility Officer at USAA. For over a decade, USAA and the Elizabeth Dole Foundation have built a strong collaboration, leveraging technology, innovation, community, and advocacy to empower hidden heroes across America. We've launched a wide array of efforts ranging from a first of its kind model of inclusive care that sets a new standard for veteran and military families to COVID-19 response, all focused on health and wellness resources for caregivers themselves. Back in 2017, the Elizabeth Dole Foundation came to USA with a bold idea to address the issue of caregiver inclusiveness on care teams, realizing that would require us to think outside of the box and would require a new system level change to how care teams operate. USAA is honored to support the Campaign for Inclusive Care, a joint initiative of the Elizabeth Dole Foundation and the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs to shift the culture of care that embraces, engages, and empowers caregivers, clinicians, and veterans throughout the entire caregiving journey from day one. This campaign is truly a testament to what's possible when public and private partners come together to take on big challenges. Today, I'm excited to represent USAA at the 2021 National Caregiver Convening and to announce the inaugural Campaign for Inclusive Care Champion Awards. The Champion of Inclusive Care Award is given yearly to providers and staff at the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs that demonstrate extraordinary care and compassion that is fully inclusive of the caregiver. These distinguished clinicians have been nominated by hidden heroes who feel their lives have been positively impacted and changed by feeling empowered, included, and recognized for their caregiving role and service to our country. This year's Inclusive Care Champion awardees are Sherry L. Jacks, RN, Inpatient Care at the Kansas City VA Medical Center. Sherry was nominated by Missouri caregiver Sean Moore, who in her words said that Sherry is a true champion of inclusive care. Dr. Justin Welch, Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine, Primary Care Physician at Fort Benning VA Clinic. Nominated by Georgia caregiver Steph Smith, she said that Dr. Welch is the standard that all of us should aspire to be. And lastly, this year's Inclusive Care Facility Award goes to White River Junction VA Medical Center, Vermont, who had the most clinicians, staff, and care teams nominated this year and has gone above and beyond in making inclusive care the standard of care. Congratulations to this year's Champions of Inclusive Care Award winners. We commend your dedication and commitment to including, empowering, and recognizing our nation's hidden heroes. USAA is honored to be a part of this effort. For those of you watching today who would like to get involved in the Campaign for Inclusive Care movement, please go to the website, campaignforinclusivecare.org. Thank you for the opportunity to share with you today and for all that you do to support our military and veteran communities. God bless you and thank you for your service.
My name is Tammy Gillums. I live in Arlington, Virginia with my husband Sherman and my eight-year-old McKinley. Sherman and I met while I was on active duty. We hit it off instantly. I, I didn't even think about the wheelchair because we had so much in common. Sherman was injured while preparing to deploy to Afghanistan. My husband has a spinal cord injury which confines him to a wheelchair. What I do is basically try to make life easier for him. So I'm there to help him with getting dressed in the morning, breakfast, ensuring that he's on time to work. Being a caregiver has its ups and downs. Juggling a lot of different things along with caring for someone full time can be complicated. Most caregivers, we just want support. We just want someone that's been in our shoes before us just to have someone else that's going through what I may be going through that day. Inclusive care to me means seeing the caregiver as an extension to the veteran and the veteran's wellness. I think it's very important that the caregiver is involved in all treatments and all aspects of the veteran's care just so that provider understands what's it like at home, what's going on at home. The inclusive care model has changed my life. If I'm included, I feel like my voice is being heard, his needs are being met. So it's important to me that all caregivers have the support that they need. I feel like the initiative that the Doe Foundation has has shed a light on people like me that felt voiceless at one point. And because of their efforts lobbying to Congress, it now puts us in the forefront of caregiving of veterans and what they need. Because of them, I do feel like my, my voice is heard. Hi, I'm Dr. Colleen Richardson. I'm the Executive Director of the Caregiver Support Program. It is an honor to be here today, and it's an honor to be with all of you. So thank you for joining us. Today we're gonna to focus on how VA is leading the way to get camp family caregivers involved in the care of the veterans that they take care of. So I'd like to take a moment and introduce our wonderful panel. We have some very distinguished guests here with us this morning. First, I'd like to introduce Ms. Tammy Gillums. Tammy is an Army veteran. She is the caregiver for her husband. You just had an opportunity to hear her story. And she is also a caregiver of the Dole Fellowship. We also have Mr. John Borsler, the Chief Veterans Experience Officer here with us today. And we have Dr. Ben Kligler, the Executive Director of the Office of Patient-Centered Care and Cultural Transformation. Welcome everybody and thanks so much for joining us today. I'm really looking forward to speaking with all of you and getting to know a little bit about what you guys are doing in your offices. And Ms. Gillum, your, your, your journey here as a caregiver and being part of the Caregiver Support Program. So thank you. First, I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the mental health care that we've been doing to be more inclusive with our family caregivers. So recently, the Compact Act passed um, a law in which we are able to now really provide more robust services, mental health services, and education for our family caregivers. We wanna make sure that we're providing you the resources that you need in order to speak with our veterans and provide them the support, education, and be able to have those initial discussions with our veterans and the folks that you guys are taking care of. Um, one of the things that is, is really important, and as many of you are aware, is the, the role of the caregiver in the lives of our veterans. They're imperative. I, I love that we refer to them as our hidden heroes, and the Secretary touched on that for just a little bit earlier today when he was speaking, how, how they do so much, and oftentimes we thank the veteran for their service, and how often we forget to thank you as a caregiver for the service that you've provided to them. You're truly a hidden hero, if you will. So I'd like to go ahead and start and just kind of open up the panel discussion with you guys today, if that's okay, and, and talk a little bit about some of the things that you've been doing in the program offices and in the, the Veterans Experience Office and, and what caregivers should know about what we're providing to them. So John, if it's okay with you, I'd like to start with you and just ask you a couple questions. So in addition to what mental health office is providing, the Veterans Experience Office really provides customer service and programs to veterans and caregivers, um, survivors, and, and other family members. If you can share just a little bit more about the work um, that you're doing so we can understand how that caregiver experience is taken into consideration, right? So we know that the Caregiver Support Program offers a variety of services to, to caregivers. Um, and we've done a lot of work together uh, here in the last year, but if you could talk a little bit more about um, 
the caregiver experience and making sure that caregiver voices are included in VA's future efforts. I, we'd love to hear some more about that. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Richardson. Sure. And, uh, thanks for allowing me to be part of the panel. It's great to be among such amazing leaders. Uh, so the Veterans Experience Office has been working with uh, veterans families, caregivers, and survivors really since day one, since we were founded in 2015, so only six years ago. And since that time, um, VA's trust scores have, of course, gone up from 55% to now at 78% enterprise-wide. And I think that's due to a lot of the the, the proactive um, posturing that, that the, not only the VA, but VEO and uh, the Veterans Experience Office specifically has led alongside the Dole Foundation and many other organizations leading mm -hmm. in this effort. Uh, so uh, the, the, uh, the best, I think, part of my job is I get to uh, work with these federal advisory committees and um, probably my favorite uh, one to work with, of course, is the, is the Families, Caregivers and Survivors uh, uh, Federal Advisory Committee. Mm -hmm. It's, of course, chaired by Senator Elizabeth Dole. And working with not only Senator Dole, but her incredible staff at the Elizabeth Dole Foundation and many of the other organizations that are represented. I believe Sherman is the vice chairman of the, of the, <laughs> the committee, so it's great to have his leadership and his knowledge as well, is really to hear the insights directly from the, the, the community and directly from these experts who work day in and day out with caregivers, their families, and survivors as well. Those are incredible listening posts that we mm -hmm. can't replicate uh, in any way. The human touch that really drives VA's programs and service delivery. Other ways that we're working, and I think future leaning and, and, and what you referred to, Dr. Richardson, is how we're going to continue to understand the caregiver journey. Um, in particular, we've, we worked and we collaborated on a caregiver journey map several years ago with the Elizabeth Dole Foundation, which really takes that human-centered design approach where we, un we want to better understand the pain points, the bright spots, and the moments that matter to caregivers in their, in their families and the veterans that they care for along that, that life journey. And I think that that allows us to develop specific tools and, and strategies to better care for yeah. and better access, provide better access and outcomes for caregiver, caregivers. Mm -hmm. But there are so many more things that we can do to continue to, to update that, that caregiver journey map because it does change over time. And also um, continue to, if that's a qualitative approach, we yeah. wanna bring the quantitative approach in as well. So we wanna make sure that we're bringing our V-signal surveys yeah. and, and transition them almost to a CISA, a caregiver's uh, signals, so that we can better understand um, what's happening in the caregiver's life every time that they access care or they help their, their, the veteran that they care for access care and along that, that continuum. Um, so it's not just a point in time look at yeah. the, the services provided. So I think that's coming very soon next year. We should see some, some spe specific surveys yeah. oriented toward our caregiver population so that we can ensure that they are provided a world-class customer experience. John, thank you so much. And you know, I, you said something that just kept hitting me and you said the continuum of care and not only is the veteran on a continuum care journey right when, when a veteran is being cared for it's a journey but the caregivers are on that journey too and so that continuum of care fluctuates over time what's needed this week or this month is going to be very different than what's needed next week or next month as as the veteran goes through his or her caregiver experience or their journey of getting to well, if you will. And so I love, you know, I love partnering with your office. Um, you've done so much for us. You've done so many listening sessions. We just recently did um, some listening sessions for our program of general caregiver support. And we, we really gleaned a lot of really good information specifically around what do, what do caregivers need? How do we become more inclusive of them in the care of the veteran? And what we, we really heard is we, they need some more support and some more education. And, and I love, you know, we've partnered with the Elizabeth Dole Foundation and doing the campaign for inclusive care. And really what that means is taking you as a caregiver and making sure that you have a say in the care of your veteran. Because who knows the veteran better than you? You live with them day in and day out. And so I think, you know, able to kind of drive that with some of the data that your team does allows us to get better at what we do as we move forward. And VA overall get better at what we do overall. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that, John. I think that's awesome. Thank you. So Ben, I want to come to you for a second. I mean, I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of Ben Kligler. Um, <laughs> Dr. Kligler is the Executive Director for the Office of Patient-Centered Care and Cultural Transformation. And, and what I love, Ben, about what you do is you really take this, I mean, across VA, you've really pushed for this, really taking this holistic, integrative approach to care for veterans, right? I mean, acupuncture, meditation, all kinds of really, really 
amazing things your, your program office has done. And so, you know, just kind of thinking about some of those things, I'm wondering, you know, you spread whole health approaches across VA, but I want you to talk a little bit about what you do, because I don't think a lot of people know specifically what you do. But if you can touch on, I know you've really kind of take this paradigm shift of changing the focus, right, of not what's the matter with you, but what matters to you in your healthcare. So can you talk to everybody a little this morning about um, kind of some of the, the tools and strategies that you use and how do you view caregiver inclusion in the work that your team does? Sure, I'd be glad to and, and thank you for having me. And thank you for doing such a great job leading the <laughs> caregiver office. Um, I think whole health is this concept that takes us uh, beyond just the great job that VA has done in managing diseases and doing disease prevention and health yeah. promotion. And it takes us beyond that to thinking about what we would call uh, well-being in your life. So how is it that you can orient your life and take charge of your life in a way that really moves you towards what matters most to you mm -hmm. in your life? Mm -hmm. So we have this idea that the first step on that journey, and this is true for caregivers as well as for veterans, is um, just having a conversation about that. We like to use the term changing the conversation, that mm -hmm. that's a lot of what we're about in our office. And so having that conversation about what's giving your life meaning and purpose right now, what strengths do you have that are helping you achieve that or move towards that, uh, what are the areas where you're a little bit held back or, or blocked, and what kind of tools or strategies could help you move forward. And we've been doing this with veterans now for 10 or so years in the VA, uh, and it's just so exciting that we are now able to move into doing this with caregivers. Mm -hmm. and, and really, I can't say how strongly we have felt that um, only being able to focus on the veterans was a limitation, because the veteran doesn't live in isolation. They live with their family, yep. they live with their friends, they live with their caregiver, their community. And so being able to take this idea of whole health out into that larger sphere it's a tremendous opportunity. And so, you know, thanks to your office, we've been able to start up a lot of programs for caregivers specifically. Um, we've been training a lot of the caregiver support staff in health coaching. Mm -hmm. So health coaching is a strategy where you get to have a conversation with somebody about just that. What is important to you in your life? What do you need to get there? What kind of goals do you want to set for yourself? And so for caregivers who are usually caught up moment to moment in just the day to day, the needs get through the day, to have a minute to sit back with somebody who's trained to ask you that question. You know, what do you need for yourself? And then to help you figure out where the resources are. So that's one great step we've been able to take. I think the other thing we've been able to do in the last two years, especially, is really build out some of the online and virtual opportunities for people to access some of these whole health experiences. And there are a couple of things in that area, and I would really encourage people to look at these because these are absolutely as much for caregivers and families as they are for the veteran. So one is we have a whole health app, which is called Live Whole Health, and this is available in uh, app stores, all the places you get your apps. Um, and it just puts right in front of you on your phone an opportunity to think about that question, what's important to you, and think about what kind of tools you might need. And, has all kinds of educational resources attached to it. So try out the app. The other idea, uh, that the other tool that's out there is something called the hashtag live whole health series. And this was something we did in response to the pandemic, again, to make sure people had access, not only veterans, but families and caregivers. And so it's an online resource that has about <laughs> 70, I think now, brief videos with different kinds of experiences. So we got to share that Zen moment a little bit ago. It's got all kinds of things like that, uh, guided meditations, chair yoga, tai chi, music therapy, more different kinds of approaches than you could even imagine. And they're out there and meant to be used as a family, as a mm. caregiver veteran team, as a community. So people can just go Google hashtag live whole health and you'll be right there and ready to go. Awesome, thank you for that. You know, you said something that kind of struck me about um, the, the online resources was created because of the, the pandemic almost. And I think, you know, it's been a, a very changing world here in the last year and a half or in a little bit longer than that. There's been a lot of things that have gone online here recently in the, la in the last uh, couple years. And, you know, 
we don't want caregivers to feel alone and isolated. And I think that's easy, easy to feel like that from time to time because the role that they take on is so much, right? I mean, Tammy, you and I had a chance to talk earlier. And I mean, not only is Tammy a caregiver, but she's a wife and a mother and a daughter. And I mean, it is so easy to get caught up in that day-to-day -day hustle and bustle that you forget. What about me, right? Where's my respite care? Where, where I need some time from you. You just forget because you're just doing you and doing everything and you take on so much. And so I love that we have these online resources like Tai Chi and yoga and really this whole health perspective that people think that they have to go to a gym for or they have to go to a building for. And really, if you can find maybe five minutes just to, to, just to kind of center yourself and, and get refocused and do you for a few minutes, I think that's imperative to the overall care of our caregivers. So I love that we have these resources. And I had mentioned earlier about that Compact Act. And so there is an online website for our families, our caregivers, and our veterans where they can find online educational resources to learn more about mental health. And I think sometimes you find, as you know, as a clinical psychologist, even I'm a little, you know, I get a little nervous about bringing up mental health with people that aren't my patients, if you will. But this online tool, and I'm gonna share that website with everybody so that you can check it out. It's www.mentalhealth.va gov slash families and what it does is it gives folks the tools and the resources they need like family members caregivers to start that initial discussion right so um, Ben I love that we have all these apps and I know you you're very passionate about them and think so thank you for sharing that with us thank you you're and welcome. while we're at it yeah. va.gov slash whole health will get you to our website awesome. and that's where you can find a lot of these resources as absolutely. well. absolutely thank you for sharing that all right, Ms. Gillums, I, I, we had a chance to connect earlier, and I love that we both found out that we're veterans. That was, I was like, yes, I knew there was that kindred spirit like right from the get-go with you. So you have had a pretty amazing journey. You've done a lot. You've been, you're an alumni of the, care, the, the, the Dole Caregiver Fellowship. You're an Army veteran, and you're, you're a mom, you're a wife, you're a spouse, you're a daughter, you're a caregiver. I mean, you, you have so much. You just have so much going on. And I know you've been involved with the VA's Caregiver Support Program. And I have no doubt you have a lot of experience and a lot of wisdom of things that you have just learned over this journey. And, and thank you so much for sharing your story for everybody. I think there are so many people that heard that story and was like, man, I can really relate to that, you know? Um, I think there's a lot of folks out there who, when they hear stories and they hear stories like yours, they're like, oh, I've been there, I know that, you know? So given all that, I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about what the caregiver support program, what, what resources, what, what have we done for you to help you in this journey as you've moved forward with your husband? Uh, for once, the caregiver program has been amazing. They've been there from day one. The app I just recently, Ben was mentioning, I just recently downloaded about a month ago. <laughs> um, awesome. Actually, our caregiver, we had an annual appointment and uh, she, she asks, how was I doing? And at times, you know, caregivers may not want to say they're not okay in front of their spouse. And I, I did that for a long time. And that, at that moment, I said, you know, I'm, I'm not doing so well today. Yeah. And she told me about the app. And um, I downloaded it, and it's been amazing so far. Um, but I just encourage more caregivers to speak up. Um, let the providers know who you are. Yeah. Um, be in the room with the appointments. Yeah. Um, they need to see you, they need to hear from you, So you, because you're a part of the journey also. The whole family is, not yeah. just the caregiver, but the kids, you know, the parents. You know, everyone's have a, a job to do, so we're just working all together. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. You know, you're absolutely right. It, it is everybody's in the journey. Mm -hmm. it, it is a journey together. It's that continuum, right? And, and things fluctuate all the time in that journey. Mm -hmm. and. I guess, you know, I, I've said this so often over the last 15 years to folks, and I almost forget it with myself, and I kind of heard you say that too, like, it's okay not to be okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It really is. And it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to feel alone, but it's not okay to stay there. Right. Right? I think that's the biggest message right. that we forget is, you know, it's okay that you're down. It's okay, mm -hmm. but it's, it's not okay to stay there right. because your husband needs you, your kids need you, and you need you. Absolutely. You need you, <laughs> and you need to do you. Um, I wonder at the beginning of your journey, there are probably a lot of things you didn't know, right. a lot of things that have surprised mm -hmm. you over the last mm -hmm. few years. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about like some of the things you wish you knew 
that you now know, like connect all those dots for everybody so that if they're at the beginning of this journey, what, what should they know? And then, you know, we've got seasoned folks, but even the seasoned folks who've been caregivers for a while still experience these ups and downs. So right. what would you share with everybody about your experience or something that you think they need to know? Yeah, so in the beginning, I was pretty standoffish because I'm a veteran and I felt like I didn't connect with anyone. You know, most caregivers yeah. aren't veterans. So, you know, coming into um, the spinal cord injury world, uh, it, was, it was a little difficult mm -hmm. because a lot of caregivers have a different role, probably a different role than I do at home. Um, so I was a little, you know, standoffish and was afraid to speak up, afraid mm -hmm. to say, I don't know what I'm doing. I need help, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, and, and my, help, my husband helps me guide me. Okay, this is what we need to do. This is how you do it. But what I didn't know is there is a lot of resources out there, not just reading. You can, people can send you apps. They can send you websites. But if you don't use them, they're just there, yeah. you know, and if you don't speak up, and go to people that's been in your shoes before and other caregivers like, hey, my husband has a spinal cord injury also. What do I do if, he's, if it's a cough? Is it a cough? Is it pneumonia? Is it COVID? Like, what do I do? So yeah. it's just, you know, speaking up and calling the providers. Don't be afraid to, you know, even if your husband says I'm okay and you know he's not okay or she's not okay, you have to say something. Yeah, yeah so just don't be afraid to, you know, put it out there you know, ask for help because it's there. You have to. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Ask for help. Take the help. Take the help. <laughs> Take the, that's the hardest part, yeah. right? We're, us veterans are a little stubborn from yeah. time to yeah. time. But it's okay to take that help. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just such a, it's such a, um, an experience, right? And, and one other thing you touched on was, you know, I didn't want to say it in front of my husband. Right. But I th do you think he maybe knew this whole, like, oh, I wonder how she's doing. You know, yeah. she's worrying about me and I'm worrying about her and I'm not going to say anything if she's not going to say right, anything. Right, right. Have you found somebody that you connect with that is going through a similar journey? So um, I would say my husband and I are a team. Yeah. You know, some days I'm being cared for. <laughs> you know, I say that all the time. Some days I'm being cared for. I'm not a caregiver today. He's my caregiver. Um, but we have a relationship that we connect and we can talk, we say, okay, forget all the, what's going on today, how are you doing? You know, yeah. how am I doing? And you know, there are times I'm like, ah, I'm okay. And he's like, no, you're not. You know, or some days I have a terrible headache and he says, I'm fine, mm -hmm. you know, go rest. So I think he's my, my biggest um, advocate and my cheerleader on my team to, that I can talk with, yeah. you know, because he knows me, you know, he knows the things about me that no one else knows. Exactly. You know, he exactly. know what I've been through with, you know, being a combat veteran, and he understands that because, you know, he's a veteran also. So yeah. we share a lot of similarities in, in the veteran room. Mm -hmm. So he recognized anyways that yeah. you weren't doing okay. Yeah. So whether you said it in front of him or not, he yeah. already knew. Well, it's just, you know, when you have to say it to someone. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's that vulnerable, you know, yeah, that vulnerable yeah. piece. Mm -hmm. um, I can so relate to that yeah. on so many levels, yeah. absolutely. Um, it's just a, it's such an incredible story that you have and, and such a journey. I mean, you know, you meet folks that are married to veterans and that are veterans themselves mm -hmm. and you have that automatic connection, right? right? I mean, when I met John, we were both, you know, I was a, a Navy doc and so John and I were like, okay, and I was a green side, so I served with the Marines and so I was like, oh, Marine, gotta get, let's talk, you know, because you have that connection. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so one of the things, and I think you maybe are aware of this, but the Caregiver Support Program does a peer mentoring mm -hmm. program. So we really, um, we take our caregivers and we, we, we set them up or hook them up with other caregivers that are going through a similar journey. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, I love that. Like I absolutely love partnering somebody up to say, hey, they're at the beginning or they're in the middle. Yeah. And, and I think you guys might be able to relate to right. one another. And so you don't feel you know, alone in that journey. I think it's easy to, to quickly get um, there. Yeah. I, I'm wondering amongst the, the John and, and Ben, if, you, if there are other things that you've thought of, or even Tammy, you know, in your experience too, what do you think are other ways that VA could be more inclusive uh, of veterans and care and their family caregivers? Are there other things that you guys have thought of in all the work that you have and in the experience that you've been through, or maybe Tammy, folks that you've heard from and say, man, I really wish we could do this to be more inclusive? Or suggestions or advice? Well, 
I, I'll just jump in. Yeah. I think, first of all, what John was talking about, about getting a feedback loop from caregivers yeah. is just so important because I think the feedback loop that we have from veterans with fee signals and the other ways we, we learned from them was just, we just pay so much attention to that and figuring out how to guide what we're doing. And then I think the other thing is, is what you were just talking about, about that peer-to-peer -peer group. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that's something that in Whole Health we're putting a lot of emphasis on for the veterans, connecting with a peer who's been trained to kind of facilitate a conversation about what matters to you and mm -hmm. help you think about how to get involved. And so helping build out that network among caregivers because yeah. whether they're veterans or not, they're having an experience that nobody else particularly mm -hmm. understands. Mm -hmm. And so... I'd love to see us work together to kind of support that and make that more available to people. I think that would be really helpful. Yeah, that's awesome. And Terry and I talked about this earlier, like we're family, right? We're a family of caregivers, we're a family of veterans. And even though that looks a little bit different now that we're out of the military, it's still that automatic connection. And so caregivers need to be feel that they're part of that family. Right. You know, when you're on active duty, the, the, the family has the, the, the connection automatically, but when you leave, the structure changes and it's a little, it's not quite the same, it's different. And so I think you're right, we kind of take that shift of like, hey, you've, you're not in the military anymore, but you're still family. Right. And we take care of our family. And that's a good point, I think, to continue thinking about how we can involve caregivers and families and spouses during that transition process, yes. which is sometimes very difficult for many people when you're leaving the military and you're going, you're leaving the installation that you may have been for two or four or you know several several more years yeah. beyond that and you're 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 moving to a different place in the country whether you're moving to be closer to family or you're moving somewhere to get a new job or going to school somewhere um, we need to have uh, a more uh, I think making sure that we're learning from the insights that we get from V signals that we get from the human centered design projects that we get from the federal advisory committee yeah and our partners at Elizabeth Dole Foundation yeah. and Wounded Warrior Project and others to better understand how we can, we can provide a better transition experience for the caregivers and, their, and the other family members that are part of that support system. So I think there's a lot to be done on that front end of yeah. the customer experience uh, when, in your entry into yeah. VA care <laughs> so that we can ensure that we have uh, you know, really happy customers for life. Yes, agreed, and, feel, mm -hmm. and they feel the support. Right? right, VA is a huge system to navigate sometimes, mm -hmm. and we've all worked for VA for many years now. And as veterans, we get our I get my care here. S sometimes I'm like, oh, that's available. I had no idea. Yeah. So you know, when we when we all left the military, you have a class that helps you transition, but that's just a, a, a small piece of it, right? And I think you're right, John. If we can get folks in the door and and know that we're we're here to support them, our family, we're here to support our family and get them where they need to be, that will be imperative. Mm -hmm. And so we really need to hear from them. Yeah. And, and from our caregivers. And just to piggyback off of John, uh, I think the VA is doing a great job of, yeah. you know, upholding Lincoln's model, you know, care for the widow, caring for the family. Mm -hmm. You know, just recently I lost my, my uncle and previous to that I lost my grandfather and they both were veterans. Um, and we can't forget about those spouses that are widows. You know, yeah. she was a caregiver for 40 years. You know, and now that he's gone, we can't forget about, she need, they need the support yeah. that we have today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that's something that we should really focus on. Once the, a family the widows, member. right? Mm -hmm. Once a family member, always a family member. Right. We steal the Marine Corps' little <laughs> saying there and just switch out a few Once words. a caregiver, always, always a caregiver. caregiver. Tran transferable. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Marine Corps, for that. <laughs> no, I, I, I love that you, you touched on that, and you're mm -hmm. absolutely right. There are so many folks that are involved in the care, mm -hmm. and what happens when that veteran's gone, and then the family feels like it disintegrates a little yeah. bit, but yeah. it doesn't. Mm -hmm. we, we, we're still family right. at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Well, I just want to say thank you. I, I just... What a great conversation today, Ben. I love, love the direction that you're going. Love it. I mean, I love whole health and I love integrative approaches mm -hmm. to, to care. They're imperative in everything that we do. And they're different. Yeah. They're different. Um, and John, you already know your office is, is you drive what veterans want and what caregivers want right. to see in their health care. Mm -hmm. It doesn't get any more imperative than that. It just doesn't. And Tammy, First, I'm glad we got to connect. I love that. Second, thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you. And thank you for taking care of your husband.
we couldn't do what we do without people like you helping us yes. so that we can be good. And if there's things that we can ever do for you, now you know who I am and now you know <laughs> who to call. <laughs> So I just wanted to say thank you so much for, for this opportunity today and to, to get an opportunity to share with you all the ways in which we're being inclusive in veterans and caregivers and their families and what we do every day to take care of our extended family. So thank you. As we conclude this morning's sessions, I'm excited to have my good friend Mike Linnington with me to announce a new partnership with Wounded Warrior Project that will mark a seminal moment in our collective efforts to support our nation's military and veteran caregivers. 10 years ago, Senator Elizabeth Dole first called military caregivers America's hidden heroes, not only because our nation had overlooked their service, but because our country knew almost nothing about them. We didn't know how many Americans were caring for veterans. We didn't know how many Americans had physical wounds, emotional wounds, or both. And we didn't have a grasp on how some policies and programs were leaving caregivers behind because they weren't immediate family members or their veteran had the wrong type of wound or they perhaps served in the wrong generation. We had no clue about the level of struggle, hardship, and sacrifice faced by these hidden heroes every single day. With such fundamental gaps in our knowledge about caregivers, we knew there was no way our nation could effectively or efficiently offer them support. That's why one of the very first steps we took as a foundation was to commission a study, a two-year nationwide comprehensive study, the very first of its kind, and one that would give us the answers to those questions and more. Our friends at Wounded Warrior Project would help make the study possible and we would entrust the research to the world-renowned experts at RAND. In 2014, we released the results in the groundbreaking Hidden Heroes Report. The findings were both urgent and immediate. We brought the nation to action with a detailed collection of evidence that has inspired and guided our nation's response for the last seven years. The discoveries made in our 2014 report drove our foundation's creation of the Hidden Heroes Campaign. They served as the bedrock for new programs built around respite relief, financial literacy, skills training, emotional support, and caregiver employment. The study guided our efforts to form a national caregiver network through our Dole Caregiver Fellowship and the Hidden Heroes Caregiver Community. It also inspired hometown support through our Hidden Heroes Cities and Counties program. The report was the underpinning for our campaign for inclusive care, which as we heard today, is literally changing the model and culture of care all across the VA. And remarkably, 
the study inspired action from policymakers at the highest levels of government, providing the urgency for Congress to pass the Raise Family Caregivers Act and the 2018 VA Mission Act, which confirmed the largest expansion of VA military caregiver benefits in the history to our pre-9-11 caregivers. In addition to the report's invaluable findings, the 2014 study and our follow-on work with RAND identified that there's still, we need, still more that we need to know. One of those areas was our understanding of the challenges and how we might support America's caregiver kids. This year, we launched our Hidden Helpers Initiative to fill in that knowledge gap. Next month, we will unveil a major new first-of-its-kind research report laying out the impacts on caregiving on millions of children. But there's still many questions about the caregiver experience, and there's so much more we could do if we invest in finding those answers now. That's why today we're announcing that as part of the Elizabeth Dole Foundation's 10th anniversary, we'll be launching a second multi-year landmark study led by RAND. Once again, we will guide the nation's support of our hidden heroes by discovering new insights into their daily lives. Whereas the 2014 report gave us a broad perspective from which to act, this report will take a closer look at the caregiver well-being in communities around America, rural, urban, and suburban environments. We'll examine how place impacts, limits, or supports opportunities to thrive, and we'll learn more about what the state-by-state -state populations look like and their unique regional needs. We'll explore what there is to learn from caregivers whose lives and lived experience is shaped by race, income level, education, and gender, and we will examine the caregiver's experience inside hospital systems, not just the VA, and celebrating what works and looking for opportunities for improvement. We could not attempt to study these important questions without two key partners who have generously funded these efforts since the beginning. First, a big thanks to Lilly Endowment. In the, 20, in, in the summer of 2013, they made their first investment in our work with Rand Corporation, and I'm proud to say they've stepped up again with a tremendous commitment to make this new study possible. Thank you again to our friends at the Lilly Endowment. Now, I'm honored to call on one of our nation's most visionary, effective, and impactful military and veteran leaders, my friend Mike Linnington, the CEO of Wounded Warrior Project. And I do mean my friend, Mike's the best. We went to Wounded Warrior Project late last year with an idea, an idea to commission another transformative study from RAND. Knowing that our nation's leaders at every level of government and our society needed to know more about how to effectively support caregivers and families. In classic style, WWP said, let's go. We're grateful for Wounded Warrior Project's recognition and dedication to quality research as a fundamental ingredient in creating sustainable short and long-term supports for the caregivers, veterans, and families we serve. To tell us more about Wounded Warrior Project's incredible commitment, please welcome Mike Linnington. Thanks, Steve. Wounded Warrior Project's partnership with the Elizabeth Dole Foundation is one that I hold incredibly dear. Working in partnership with your organization, our peers, policymakers, caregivers, and veterans, we've accomplished so much since 2014 and are set to expand even further on this critical impact. At Wounded Warrior Project, our mission is to honor and empower wounded warriors, and it's one of the greatest responsibilities we can imagine. But it's not enough for those we serve just to survive as they embark on their journeys of recovery and rehabilitation. We intend for them to truly thrive, and an integral part of that means their families and caregivers must thrive as well. You heard Senator Dole speak about that this morning. Absolutely. And because no one organization can meet all the needs of wounded, injured, and ill veterans, our partnership with the Elizabeth Dole Foundation and the work we accomplish together is vital to building strong, resilient veteran families and communities. For years, we've worked with Elizabeth Dole Foundation to connect wounded veterans and their families with better caregiving resources and support. And Steve, as you just mentioned, 
Wounded Warrior Project has been a deeply invested partner in these research initiatives from day one. We recognized that we knew very little about the hardships and gaps in service our hidden heroes face on a daily basis. The 2014 study was world-class and generated rigorous, high-quality findings that not only served as a roadmap for Wounded Warrior Project service to family members and caregivers, but it was the go-to guide for every VSO, MSO, corporate partner, congressional member, and even the VA itself. It was a clear call to action for all of us. Our work cannot just be about supporting the veteran. Together, we must continue to strengthen and evolve the network of support for the entire family, providing access to services and resources that help them to thrive. Whether it's mental health resources, physical health and wellness programming, economic or empowerment services, or simply seeking out connections with other veterans, family members, support members, caregivers, both Wounded Warrior Project and the Elizabeth Dole Foundation are working to meet people where they are in their personal journey and recovery. And the more we know about the challenges facing the caregiver community, especially as the major post 9-11 military engagements have ended, certainly in, Af in Afghanistan in particular, the better positioned we will be to strategically direct philanthropic resources, set policy agendas, and continue our advocacy with and for military families. At Wounded Warrior Project and Elizabeth Dole Foundation, we see this new study like the last one, a project that will benefit our entire society, from the organizations who support veterans and caregivers to the cities and towns where they live and the policymakers and agency leaders at every level of our government. And building upon the previous findings, this study will help us further understand the journey of the caregiver allowing for the creation and delivery of more effective short and long-term support. We are so grateful and proud to be part of this important work alongside the Elizabeth Dole Foundation and RAND. To tell us more about the next round of research is the co-director of the RAND Epstein Family Veterans Policy Research Institute and a senior behavioral scientist at the RAND Corporation. He too is a friend. He's also an epidemiologist who has researched and public, published extensively on behavioral health, substances abuse, and military and veterans wellness. And he was the co-author of RAND's 2014 study on military caregivers and will co-lead this study. So please welcome Dr. Rajiv Ramchand. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, uh, Steve and your colleagues at the Elizabeth Dole Foundation. Uh, we'd like to personally thank the Lilly Endowment and Wounded Warrior Project for your support of this next phase of our critical research. Our newest phase of research will be co-led by Dr. Tamara Dubowitz at RAND and me. On behalf of both of us and our entire team at RAND, we want to offer sincere gratitude to Senator Dole, without whose passion and conviction to the cause of military and veteran caregivers none of the momentum over the past decade would have been possible. It's amazing to think it's been a decade since my colleague Terry Tenelian and I first met Senator Dole to conceptualize that first 2014 study on military and veteran caregivers. And it's truly awe-inspiring to see how the Elizabeth Dole Foundation has been able to fill so many of the gaps we were able to identify through that work. It's also incredible to see more research being conducted on military and veteran caregivers, much of which was supported by the Elizabeth Dole Foundation. We're especially excited about the new report by our colleagues at Mathematica on hidden helpers, children and military caregiving families. Many people don't recall that the first thing we did at RAND when we launched our research was to hear directly from military and veteran caregivers themselves. Back in 2012, we conducted focus groups with the first cohort of dual caregiver fellows. The insights we learned from these caregivers helped shape our study. We learned what questions we needed to ask in our survey, and we learned about the types of programs we should include in our environmental scan. In the same way, we want to start RAN 2.0 by listening to military caregivers. Today, I'm going to highlight some of the new ground our study will cover and encourage you all to use the chat feature to tell us what you think. Although I'm here speaking, Dr. Dubowitz is part of the chat and is helping to take notes. 
In a few weeks, we're planning to send a scoping questionnaire to all of today's participants with more detailed questions, and we hope you'll fill that out as well. The first thing our new study will do is see how the landscape of military and veteran caregivers has changed. Are there more or fewer caregivers than there were a decade ago? Do these, number differ, these numbers differ across the country? But we also want to see how caregiving itself has changed. For those who have been caregivers for the past decade, use the chat to let us know how caregiving, how caregiving has changed for you. Have things gotten easier or have they gotten harder and why? Are you more comfortable performing tasks? Have you been able to access more supports? Have there been technological advances in caring for your loved one? For those who are new caregivers, what kind of conditions do those you are caring for have? When were they diagnosed? What are the kinds of caregiving support they need? For both new caregivers and those who've been caregiving for a while, how has caregiving affected your family, your relationships? We've also learned more and more about the types of health conditions our veterans and military personnel have, both visible and invisible wounds of war and there is growing concern about things like the long-term effects of traumatic brain injury and exposure to environmental toxins. For caregivers caring for those with TBI, use the chat function to tell us how your loved one's condition has changed and now how you have had to adapt to your caregiving activities to accommodate these changes. For those who are caring for veterans who are exposed to environmental toxins, what types of injuries and conditions do you find yourself supporting? What does your caregiving look like? What kinds of activities are you supporting? And has this changed over the past decade? As Steve mentioned, we also want to look at the communities caregivers live in and work in and how these communities may be supporting them or not. Caregivers live in cities and suburbs and rural communities, and we want to know how your experiences differ from each other. Use the chat function again to tell us, for example, if you're living in a city, are support programs accessible to you? Are there wait lists? Do these aspects of city living affect your use of support services? For caregivers in the suburbs, are there barriers or support that make these support programs more or less accessible? For instance, do you have sufficient transportation coverage to help you and your loved one get to and from programs? For caregivers who live in rural areas, how's your broadband? And does spotty broadband coverage limit your access to online and other virtual services? And of course, for everyone, we've been living in a global pandemic for almost two years now. How has COVID impacted your ability to provide support and to receive support? Another feature of our study will be to look at some of the most hidden of our hidden heroes. In phase one, for example, we learned that men who served as caregivers often felt excluded from the programs that serve caregivers, many of which women caregivers were the majority. We want to know more about the experiences of men and women caregivers and how their experiences differ. We also want to know how caregiving experiences are different for racial and ethnic minorities, LGBTQ plus caregivers, those living in immigrant families, and other groups. Use the chat feature to tell us if you think there are other hidden groups of hidden heroes that we should shine a light on. And if you're a member of these groups, tell us how your experiences have been different than those of other caregivers. Another thing that's changed since our last study was the creation and expansion of programs to support caregivers, including federal programs like the VA's Comprehensive Assistance for Family Care Caregivers, their Aid and Attendance Program, and the DOD's Special Compensation for Assistance with the Activities of Daily Living, or SCADL program. That's a mouthful. If you use these programs, use the chat function to tell us about your experiences with them. How did they benefit you? If you haven't used the programs, why not? Were you and your family ineligible? Did you know about them? Or did you decide not to use them for other reasons? We're also interested in some of the challenges caregivers face that these programs may not address. Are you worried about your own mental health 
or the mental health of other caregivers that you might know? What about alcohol and other substance use? Are caregivers you know using alcohol or other substances to help cope with the stress of caregiving? Finally, our proposed study will look at aspects of the healthcare setting that either make caregivers feel welcomed or the opposite. And I have to say, this aim is very personal for me. My father passed away while I was working on the first phase of this study, and in the weeks we spent in the hospital, I was keenly aware of how unwelcomed me and my family felt. Waiting room chairs were uncomfortable and broken, magazines were years old, vending machines offered stale coffee and junk food. Tell us if the healthcare facilities you go to are doing better. What makes you feel welcomed? And also, what do you wish would change so that you felt more welcomed when you take your loved one to medical appointments? For RAN 2.0, we have worked with the Elizabeth Dole Foundation to create an expert advisory board who will help guide our efforts. We will also design a study that amplifies the voices of our military and veteran caregivers. This is just the beginning. We plan to save today's chat and will use that to guide us. As I mentioned before, in a few weeks, we will also send out a questionnaire to everyone who registered for today's program, and we'll use those results as well to guide our efforts. We ask you, please fill it out. Your experiences are valuable. Your insights are important. Tell us your stories so we hear them and use them to inform our research activities. To Steve and Mike, everyone at the Elizabeth Dole Foundation and the Wounded Warrior Project, as you can tell, we at RAND and at the RAND Epstein Veterans Policy Research Institute are thrilled at the opportunity to work with you again and to conduct the study. We thank the Elizabeth Dole Foundation, the Wounded Warrior Project, and the Lilly Endowment for making this possible. We're looking forward to starting our research and sharing our findings with you and the entire military and veteran caregiving community. We are confident that as we did in 2014, version 2.0 will result in identifying recommendations to help improve the lives of our veterans, military personnel, their families, and most importantly, their caregivers. Thank you. Thank you, Rajiv, for leading us through that exercise to kickstart the next phase of research. We are very excited for what's ahead, and it is critical to include the diverse voices of our caregivers all around the country throughout this entire process. One of the pieces of wisdom that came from the 2014 RAND study was that caregiving does not happen in a vacuum. RAND said that the circumstances of caregiving would evolve as the mission of our military changes and as the focus Americans paid to those missions changed with them. Of course, we're seeing that impact right now with our nation's withdrawal from Afghanistan. To bring our community together during this trying time, we've brought in health, mental health professionals and experts for a series of virtual conversations about how to emotionally manage the unfolding events and how to talk to, monitor, and support veterans and family members. We also worked with our Hidden Heroes Ambassador, Savannah Guthrie, and our friends at the Today Show to share the important emotional experiences of caregivers and veteran families. Our foundation also distributed resources throughout our network, including to the 173 <coughs> communities that now make up our Hidden Heroes cities and counties. And I thank our friends at Comcast, NBC Universal, and General Carol Eigert, retired, for supporting that vital program. Our team has doubled down on our communications and support of caregivers through our Hidden Heroes Caregiver Community, a vetted, facilitated online forum exclusively for military caregivers. I share all this as a reminder to every caregiver out there that we are here for you. While our team is hard at work developing the programs and resources you are hearing about today, we are also here day and night ready to support you whenever you need us. And I know that the VA and my friend Meg Cabot can say the same. I also encourage every caregiver to join the Hidden Heroes Network. There, you will find resources, expert community facilitators, and thousands of fellow caregivers who share your story. 
You are not alone. Please visit hiddenheroes.org today. Caregivers, you are so critical to VA healthcare teams. And I also want you to know that no matter what kind of care you provide, we see you. You are important to us and we are here for you. Please reach out to your local caregiver support program team. There's a team at every VA who values you and is here to support you. Whether it's through one-on-one -on -one coaching, a support group, skills training, or connecting you to a caregiver peer, we want to help you with your individual needs please visit www.caregiver.va.gov where you can find the team in your area. Now, before we take a quick break, I'd like to thank all our morning speakers, especially Senator Dole, Secretary McDonough, my amazing co-host, Meg Cabot, Paula Cobb, Mike Linnington, and all of our terrific panelists. I also want to pay special recognition to Harriet Dominique of USAA, who graciously presented our Inclusive Care Champion Awards today. Harriet has been one of the Foundation's biggest champions. She's a truly accomplished leader who exhibits compassion, loyalty, and has an immense heart every single day. We've been so fortunate to work with her to establish military caregivers as a pillar of USAA's corporate giving, which has made such a significant difference in our community. Harriet recently announced her retirement and all of us at the Foundation and the VA want to say congratulations and wish her the best of luck. She's become a part of all of our families, so we know this is not goodbye. My friends, this day will continue at 1 p.m. Eastern Time for a panel discussion on caregiver employment. We will then move right into our Careers for Caregivers Job Fair, sponsored by our friends at Booz Allen Hamilton. We have employers lined up to speak to caregivers about career opportunities available right now. You won't want to miss it. We'll be back very soon. <laughs> 